So whether you're a long-term hardcore Zelda fan like I am, or you're someone new to the series from the success of Breath of the Wild on the Switch, in today's video, I wanna talk about all things Skyward Sword HD, some things you need to know before you buy this game and hopefully help you make your decision on if you will play through this classic Zelda title. What's up, nation? If it's your first time on the channel, make sure you join some bro nation by subscribing below. Hit the like button on this video if you enjoy it today and make sure you turn on your bell notification icon so you're kept up to date with all the newest gaming news. As I mentioned, guys, today we're talking about Skyward Sword HD as at the time of filming this video, it is Tuesday and the game releases this coming Friday. So I am extremely hyped for this title to finally drop as we have gotten a lot of hype and promotion around it from Nintendo. But the first thing I do wanna talk about is the surprise way that Nintendo has been unveiling the features of this game as a lot of fans expected you know when it was initially announced to have all of the quality of life improvements outlined and there was actually a lot of controversy around this if you weren't familiar with it that there was an amiibo that came out and there was no other official quality of life enhancements at the time and nintendo had a thing like fast travel from anywhere in the game locked or tied to this amiibo that was 24.99 which is higher than a standard price amiibo and of course in the world of 2021 it quickly got scalped up and you know listed on sites like ebay for 75 dollars 80 dollars and higher and that made a lot of fans very angry as that was all we really knew other than button controls supported that nintendo had done work on this game but now as we get closer and closer they have actually released an official quality of life improvements trailer we even just got the confirmation that there will be free range motion controls so the first thing i want to share with you guys on in relation to skyward sword hd is one this game was not well received when it was first come out on the Wii. I mean, this was probably one of the most divisive, if not the most hated outright 3D Zelda from all hardcore fans. And there was a mix of different reasons for why that was. One of which is that Nintendo in the Wii era was focusing on a very broad casual audience and while it was a great idea to have link tied to motion controls for sword swings and shield functionality and things like that it really made a lot of fans upset that that was the only option we had to play this game you then had a cell shaded art style which some fans do prefer and then other fans absolutely do not like and then you had things like fee which is a very overbearing uh, NBC, npc that outlines everything for you the tutorial to the beginning part of the game is way too long there was a lot of reason to be pretty disappointed with this title when it comes to the original wii release however a reason why it's so important especially if you are a long-term zelda fan is the story it has to offer as if you don't know there are three different timelines in zelda that do split up but we don't know why we're always playing as different links and different zeldas and you're seeing stories being told about thousands of years ago there was a hero that rose up you know we never really understood what was going on in the universe of zelda until this game as it is the origin story for everything the creation of hyrule the creation of the master sword and there's so much incredible you know storytelling that goes into that and i do want to keep this video spoiler free but you know obviously link and zelda that you play through over the course of time are not the same people ganon is not the same ganon in many cases and you know there is a reason for that and this game sets the stage for everything so if you are just a fan of Zelda lore in general you do need to pick this up but I am gonna walk through quickly all of the quality of life improvements that we can expect from the original Wii version and what the game will ultimately feature when it is released on the switch in HD so as I mentioned a big one is optional help from fee as she only appears in cutscenes when necessary and can otherwise be summoned manually for advice or guidance which is huge because if you don't want to be spoiled on how to solve a puzzle before you even got a fair shot at solving it yourself you can now turn her off or just interact with her when you want to you have an enhanced frame rate because the game originally run ran at 30 frames per second it now runs at 60 frames per second which if you've seen any of my other videos you will know that is a big deal to me as the smoothness of 60 frames per second is absolutely noticeable from a 30 frame performance gap you can fast forward dialogue which seems like a given i don't know why you couldn't do this in the first game but you literally couldn't and now you can there's streamlined item information because one common complaint from fans is that you're getting over explained what items are you might pick up a rupee or a heart and something that is extremely basic that you find throughout the game at all times and for whatever reason it 
fee or the item just description in general wants to tell you what that is again and it often happened after you save and quit through a run and whenever you come back into the game they act like you forgot everything you learned even if you're 40 hours plus into this title so that is now done with as you know they're not going to re explain what an item is after you get it the first time you can skip cutscenes, which is good for if you're going to want to replay the game over and over maybe do a, a lot of 100 runs or, or you know even speed runs and things like that but i really would recommend everybody as the main selling point for me on this game is the story that it tells so don't go and skip the cutscenes and only go in it for the gameplay this is an extremely important story to the entire history of the zelda universe so you do need to go through and watch those cutscenes, especially on your first run through then auto save will be added in so you won't always have to save at those statues the bird statues that you used to have to go to now it's like if you made a lot of progress the game will automatically save your file i don't know when exactly that pops up and when what triggers it to automatically save but apparently the game will be doing things like that in the background as you would expect with most modern day games and then you know a big complaint for me was the tutorial of the game as i felt like this was probably one of the most grindy tutorials to get through it's like let me go see what you know fly around in the sky and see what's in the land below and you literally in the old game had to go through so much dialogue with npcs and so many different tutorial aspects of the game just to get started in skyloft before you could go branch out and see what else the world had to offer and this is now streamlined and very cut back from the sounds of it and if it's even now confirmed one of the new pieces of information that nintendo just dropped today is that if you know how to use the sword and the shield on motion controls or even button controls you can totally skip that section of the tutorial so it's really nice for seasoned players that already kind of know what to you know expect and what this game is going to play like and so you don't have to go through hours of a tutorial to start off before you can start enjoying the gameplay and then another big one that was just uncovered yesterday as far as quality of life goes is we have full control of the camera which sounds like something that's very expected nowadays obviously if you played breath of the wild you know that's something that's included in a title like that but on the wii you had the motion controller and you had a single nunchuck and so that caused for some very clanky you know looking around animations you basically had the z target you know where you wanted to face link and it would chop to that frame and so now we have a second analog that we can fully control the camera with another thing that nintendo confirmed last minute is that if you are playing in motion controls you will have the option just to obviously move the right analog stick as that is not tied to your sword movement but if you are playing in button controls they have the feature tied to the l button so you will be able to hold down the l button and actually move with the right analog and that was one of my concerns in my video yesterday where i didn't actually know how nintendo would map that and it does appear you know that we will have that option to still have the free range of motion on the camera side of things when it comes to being playing in button mode as that's how i'm primarily planning on playing it my first playthrough i'm sure i will mess around with the motion controls here and there but i'm most excited to play through this with the new button controls and which with, with how they have the movements mapped to the right analog stick so that is all good news there and then one major expectation to set with this title if you are somebody who is new to the zelda series as far as being you know you became a fan from breath of the wild and onward because that is the best selling zelda title of all all time and there's obviously a ton of new Zelda fans that were exposed to the series from that title I do want to set a very real expectation that this game is in no way shape or form trying to be an open world non-linear experience it is more of the traditional Zelda formula that I really enjoy I love what what Nintendo did with Breath of the Wild I want to make that very clear I love Breath of the Wild it's one of my all-time favorite Zelda games but there are absolutely aspects that I miss from this traditional formula and one of it is a linear progression and that you know comes along with you conquer dungeons in a certain order and you can't just go wherever you want as far as whenever the world opens up like there is actually a path for you to follow on this game you need to get you know certain items before you can get other items and you won't be able to progress to a certain part of the world until you've conquered this dungeon or that dungeon so that's something to set expectations with and while you know this is a very different formula from breath of the wild it also spawned some of the ideas for breath of the wild in the way that this was the first game that we saw the stamina wheel be functional and that's where link actually does get tired after running for too long and obviously that was something that in breath of the wild you could upgrade and in this game it was the introduction of the stamina wheel 
as we never had that mechanic before we don't have weapon durability in skyward sword hd but we do have shield dur durability which was the first time that nintendo had ever played around with that so this is the game before breath of the wild was released and there's obviously a lot of influence from nintendo as far as you know how skyward sword hd kind of laid the groundwork for some of what they were trying to do with breath of the wild and then i do want to say another reason why the story is going to be so important besides the fact that it is the origin story for the whole series is i personally have speculation and i know a lot of other people do as well that skyward sword is going to tie into breath of the wild 2 in some way shape or form as if you look at the opening scene from the trailer where link is falling through the sky it is exactly reminiscent of what he does in skyward sword at the opening trailer it's the same thing there's islands in the sky in breath of the wild 2 that's also what you know skyloft is in the original skyward sword game and i do think that these are ultimately going to influence each other and i think there's a reason nintendo wants to have this game come out before breath of the wild 2 and have fans exposed to this story because i would not be surprised if these stories intertwine somehow and the world of skyward sword is somehow linked to what we're doing in breath of the wild 2 so i think it's a really exciting thing to pick up i think it's a game that you have to get day one if you're a true zelda fan if you didn't like it on the wii i would encourage you to give it one more shot on the switch just for the simple fact of all these enhancements i know there's talk around the price of you know this was originally a 50 dollars game on the wii but it also wasn't hd we didn't have button controls it was very clunky and i think that most of the game's shortcomings are going to be fixed in this version of it on skyward, skyward sword hd and it's out this friday so again i know this game's not for everybody out there but if you are zelda fan and you're looking forward to breath of the wild 2 like i am i would definitely encourage you to pick this one up play through it enjoy the story and you know see what you think if you are a brand new zelda fan see what you think about the more traditional style formula as as i mentioned this is not an open world experience it's very linear and i would be curious to know if you guys you know enjoy that after you've had something like a super open world in breath of the wild for me this is going to be you know more of a trip down memory lane as i primarily have played the more linear classic zelda formula style game so I am very excited to pick this up day one, but at this point in the video, guys, I do want to know from you if you're planning on getting this day one at release, if you're going to wait a little while, see if you can find it on sale maybe, or if it's something that, you know, you really were turned off by the price point of $60 and you don't think it's worth it in your eyes. So please leave me all your thoughts with that in the comments down below before you leave the video. And then also hop over to the community tab where I will be asking you so we can get a percentage poll going of if you're planning on getting this one, this game day one or waiting. Thanks so much for watching the video today, everyone. I do truly appreciate you all sticking around until the end. I do at this point in the video want to invite you all one more time to join some donation if you haven't done so already. Do so by subscribing below. Hit the like button on your way out if you enjoyed it today. And make sure you turn on your bell notification icon so you're kept up to date with all the newest gaming news. That's going to do it for me, guys. I hope you all have a great day. Some donation out.